Hi everybody and welcome back. In this lecture we are going to briefly step over the solutions and discuss how I approached the problem. Let's start with the pre-processing notebook. I used the same imports as we used in the previous project. I also didn't change anything regarding the visualization of a volume. Regarding the pre-processing I changed three things. At first, instead of set normalizing and min-max scaling the volume, I simply scaled it by dividing it by 3071. I did not use the lang window. Next, instead of dropping 32 pixels from multiple borders, I simply dropped the first 30 slices along the axial view. Of course, I also cropped the segmentation mask. Regarding the train test split, I used 75 train patients and the remaining ones for validation. Before saving the individual slices and the segmentation masks, I resized them to 256 squared to drastically reduce the training time. When resizing the masks, I used nearest neighbor interpolation to ensure that all pixels are either 0 or 1. The validation part remains unchanged besides swapping the path and the file we want to plot. Due to the fact that I used a very similar pre-processing notebook and kept the overall directory structure, I could reuse our cardiac dataset. Besides renaming it to lung dataset, no changes were applied. When validating the dataset, I of course changed the path to the files and used the new lang dataset. I used the same unit as we used when tackling the problem of atrium segmentation. No parameters were changed. When you want to use the provided weights for inference, please make sure that your model matches this one. Last but not least, let's talk about the training notebook. As already discussed in the introductory lectures, I used oversampling to tackle the problem of class imbalance. When comparing both binary cross entropy and dice loss, I observed that the binary cross entropy yielded a much better result than the dice loss. Therefore, I used the binary cross entropy as loss function in the final notebook. Besides that, nothing was changed in the model class. Let's now have a look at the final evaluation. I took the dice score implementation of the last lecture and simply removed the one minus statement. This function now calculates the dice score. When evaluating the complete validation dataset, it yields a dice score of 0.51. Although this value may look small at first, it is actually a very good result. Lung tumors are often really small, sometimes only a few pixels in size. Therefore, missing only some pixels or classifying some healthy pixels as tumorous directly leads to a significantly reduced dice score. Let's have a look at the final visualization which further supports this statement. Please feel free to change this threshold here to observe what happens. Alright, let's have a look at the predicted segmentation. Note that I already fast forwarded the video a little bit to spare you some time. Wow! Although the tumor is quite small, most of its surface was correctly detected and segmented by our model. The small errors this network made are enough to drastically reduce the die score. Congratulations to everybody! You just finished the capstone project of this course 
and created a lung cancer segmentation model. In the next and final lecture, we will leave the two-dimensional setting and actually handle those scans the way they are. Three-dimensional. Thanks!